We often believe that health is an individual matter concerned with our genetic makeup and subject to our own lifestyle. There are, however, many additional circumstances which affect our health and which are either precluded, unknown, or simply beyond the individual control. All of such circumstances can form the social determinants of health. Everything influences our well-being, from our place of birth, the way we grow up, life and work, the health system we have and the policies applied in our countries both at national and international levels. However, how would we explain the discrepancies existing about life expectancy according to different countries, given that we all have approximate physical characteristics? A step-by-step -step close up. No doubt our behavior is a social determinant of health. Our own decisions about smoking, drinking alcohol, exercise or lack of it, eating habits and so on, may contribute to healthier state. However, we ought to bear in mind that behind each decision, there also is a social component. An example, why in the second half of the 20th century, there was such a massive smoking increase? Advertising played a key role when telling us that the first cigarette was tantamount with the ritual of passing from childhood to adulthood. Only with the passing of time have we understood that smoking is a harmful practice. One can therefore establish that publicity and available information are crucial to our lifestyle and health. At another level, health social determinants are identified within the material circumstances. Is food available to us? Is drinkable water at hand? What's its quality like? What sort of life conditions do we have? Is housing accessible to us? Is employment dignified and secure? Do we have access to essential services such as health and education? It is believed that around three quarters of mankind have no option to freely choose in order to access adequate food, a healthy environment or a satisfying job, all of which have repercussions on physical and mental health and social at large. The level of social determinants depends on social organisation and public policies. Social networks are a main indicator of the health of a society. From more intimate, informal networks, such as families and close friends who look after us on first instance, to the communitarian social networks likely to offer organised strategies for common well-being at large, fight for dignified accommodation, improve air and water quality, or psychological support networks a cohesive society enjoys better health. What really generates large inequality in the health sector are socio-economic contexts, public policy and politics. Let's check the socio-economic contexts such as social class, gender or ethnic groups for instance. Studies about health and poverty are published yearly. We observe truly disquieting data confirming that in the same city life expectancy oscillates, subject to the neighbourhood's socio-economic conditions. Indeed, in Barcelona, the difference can be up to 11 years between the wealthiest and the poorest areas. Ethnic group and gender-related disparity has also been observed, women being the worst affected. In the USA, the likelihood of dying when giving birth or contracting a delivery-related illness is 243% higher in Afro-American women than in the rest. Public policy adopted by each country will have a radical effect on the health of its population, not to mention other areas such as education, social care, environmental issues and facing epidemics. Labour policies as an example. According to the International Labour Organization, the accident rate in the world, whether fatal or otherwise, amounts to 270 million a year and it's been ascertained that around 160 million people suffer illnesses related to work. It would seem that adopting a safety policy, along with the implementation of adequate programmes, would get rid of such figures. Likewise, educational policies influence the health of the population, and it's been proved that a higher level of education is tantamount with better health. In Russia, for example, the likelihood to live to the age of 65 in 2001 was 30% higher in adults with tertiary studies. As far as water quality policies are concerned, as well as those related to air quality and fighting epidemics, there's a long list available of illnesses deriving from lack of clean water, 
and the WHO calculations maintain that 1.8 million children die every year due to diarrhea-related disease and 1.3 million are due to paludism. It's also been proved that investing in health social determinants is crucial to raise a healthier society, which would be more effective and less expensive, even if the current trend in health investment purports the opposite. Three basic recommendations have to be borne in mind in order to improve the health of the population. First, increase the daily life conditions by generating healthy environments for everybody and at all levels, as well as implement a universal healthcare system. Second, fight against the unequal distribution of power, money and resources. Equity ought to be the criteria to evaluate governmental actions. Third, make available those means able to measure, analyse and evaluate so as to issue policies fitting the needs of the population. To sum it up, we can only contribute to the right to health of the population when all efforts are made to reduce the inequalities caused by the social health determinants.